Hi there, I'm Duke. I'm here to assist you while setting up your Watan OS. First, select your preferred language. Yes. Now we have... Some spicy picks. What exactly is happening there? Have Hacker Man, might be a Phlebotomy Corp, obviously. We have Claymation, we have our boy looking like uh, Slender Man <laughs> in a way. No, he looks like the Rake, my bad. We got Eyes, Eyes Up the Wazoo, more Eyes. We can always go with the default option, you know? The dog holds gun at you! Or we can go with the funny. There's just this something about this kind of pointillism style. Is it pointillism? I'm not quite sure. But there's just something I like about this style. Yep. Name should be higher than two characters. Oh, I can't use my regular standard thing. Hold on, hold on. Let me just. Okay, there we go. Just, uh. Went poof of my cursor. Okay. Can't use my standard thing. Arrgh. When it says last name must be higher than two characters, there's just something quite erotic about this. I won't tell you what it is. Because that would be... That would not be good for me. I'm just gonna... There's no way I can... I can't... I can't... I have to do it this. There's no way I can put anything else. <laughs> Dang. I won't look. Promise. Security question. What a great security question. <laughs> yeah! Hold on. I should probably write this down somewhere so I don't forget. That'd be pretty bad, won't it? Continue. Huh. Interesting. They don't even let you attempt to connect to it. Nope. Ah, I didn't guess, yeah, sure. Hmm, huh, scroll sensitivity's a bit low. What does enable blur do? Oh, I see. I'll go with the generic. Interestingly enough, this is not synced to my system time because it is not 2021. It is not the first day of 2021. And it is definitely not a contrary to uh to my gimmick. I am not I'm not recording this at night, unfortunately. I got things to do. Welcome! Before we start talking about the actual game, let me give you a tour around Watan OS. Since the tour function, as of right now, has yet to be properly implemented. Now, the biggest difference between your actual OS and in-game one is a lack of a file directory, which you can clearly see. So most of how you interact with files will be through the various apps on the screen. First of all, let's go through the browser. It contains links to three different web pages. The Watan OS description page, the spooky cryptic puzzle website, and Cryptor, which you'll be using to decrypt code in-game. 
I suggest you familiarize yourself with the different types of code offered by encoding random stuff and looking at its output. Morse code consists of dashes and dots. Base64 usually comes in a string with mixed cap alphabet letters as well as numerical values. It also often comes with an equal sign at the end, although this one seems not to have it. Binary is zeros and ones. Militaire, which is the phonetic alphabet, isn't very good at encryption. You just take the first letter of each word. The only thing mysterious about this is that nobody talks about it enough for people to recognize it. Caesar cipher is... it looks like a bunch of scrambled letters. And file encryption does not exist. Let's take a look at the side panel now. This button allows you to view the HTML code behind the web page. Uh oh, looks like Contentia is referred to as Enigma in the HTML, so it sounds like the HTML isn't correct. This other button allows you to download images. You can't right click and save things unfortunately, so you have to keep this in mind. Another thing I noticed is that Tab does absolutely nothing. So you'll have to properly click on things instead of Tab and Enter to get to interactables. Now, the next app to consider is the Photo Viewer. Unlike Windows or Mac OS, you get color correction and rotation features automatically included at your fingertips. The negative function inverts colors, which is useful when images are extremely dark. The contrast slider makes features more distinct. And the brightness slider just turns the brightness up. You should also note that the button next to the name gives you information about the file. This data is also usually viewable via the file manager in a standard system, which once again, this lacks. Lastly, there's a paint function you can temporarily draw on the image. I thought it was a bit janky, but serviceable. Now let's move on to the music player. It comes with included music, multiple playlists, and features only included in the now playing tab. Of note is the playback speed slider, which you'll need for approximately one puzzle. You'll mostly want to muck around in the music section, so you have something to listen to while you crack a puzzle. It's mostly chiptune and EDM. Oh wait, is that Friday Night Funkin'? Lastly, this is the video player. It contains promotional videos for the game. There's a frame by frame feature. That's all I have to say about it. Now, obviously, there's the notepad for taking notes, and there's the terminal, which is fairly disappointing. And the calculator, which does what you would obviously expect from your average calculator. But let's talk about my thoughts on the operating system as a whole now. The biggest issue of it is that the onboarding is lacking. And as a result, it makes it harder to solve puzzles since you don't know which tools are accessible and where to find information to help you. Stylistically, the UI is clean, consistent, and nice to look at, which is about what you would expect from anything that isn't Windows. However, there's some issues that make it a lot more clunky to use than you would expect, mainly issues with window management. First of all, browser tabs cannot be separated. They live together, they die together. This makes it so you have to copy and paste ciphertext into the notepad just to paste it back into Cryptor. Second of all, Windows cannot pass off screen. I was kind of surprised by this because objects aren't usually restrained by the viewport, so I couldn't see a reason this would be an issue, which means that the dev probably implemented it on purpose. Windows are fairly large, so not being able to do this means that your screen is just filled with windows overlapping each other. One minor bug I noticed is that the keyboard input isn't being sent only to the window in focus, which is why when I was using the notepad, the photo viewer would also respond to the arrow inputs. Lastly, it lacks display settings. I'll probably never shut up about the importance of second monitor support and resolution changing. Honestly, I was a bit more disappointed than usual about it because in my opinion, interactions with hardware is a core feature of an OS. The entire point of an OS is to manage software and hardware, so not including display settings breaks the emergence of it. As for the actual puzzles, I'll try to explain my opinions with minimal spoilers, but if you're interested in the game, you should try it out for yourself before you watch the rest of this because I will be showing some of them. Anyway, I thought their difficulty mainly came from not knowing what to do. As part of that lack of onboarding, I often got stuck simply from not knowing where to find features in the 
game, like downloading the images or finding the image info button. This would have been less of an issue had the buttons had tooltips, which is a short description that pops up whenever you hover over an icon. In other cases, I thought the pop culture references were unhelpful. I have no idea what Eminem has to do with this puzzle as, as somebody who has never played Wordle. Yes, I'm not kidding. I was stumped by the Wordle puzzle. The doubly encrypted puzzle was simple enough to understand the steps to, but it took me some time because I somehow managed to crash the game copying and pasting text. And the input bars, limitations really show as a result of this puzzle. My favorite puzzles were actually the ones that were standalone and provided all the information you needed within themselves. Because most of the puzzles that relied on in-game features basically checked if you knew about a specific feature that you would only know if you sat there going through the chat branches. My least favorite puzzle was the Wordle one because it assumes you're familiar with Wordle enough to jump to the conclusion that yes, this is Wordle. From a game design standpoint, I appreciate that they have hints and answers available, but it doesn't make up for puzzles not being intuitive. As a game, the ultimate goal is for the player to be able to solve the puzzle. You don't have to spoon feed the player, but when puzzles are somewhat open-ended, it would help a lot if entering in certain incorrect prompts would give more specific hints than the generalized ones offered. It would also be nice if they made it more accessible to players less versed in the way of puzzle solving, because most of the puzzles assume you can recognize common codes and tricks that are used in puzzles like these. I get that this game is inspired by Cicada 3301, but a game needs to also be enjoyable, not just difficult. In that sense, the game should take advantage of the web browser to provide the information that players need to solve these puzzles. If a puzzle requires information not in the game, then that is automatically unfair to the player. For something being pushed as a horror game, there's not much horror in it right now. The only real horror would be in the offered customization features, where there's backgrounds and profile pictures that clearly incorporate horror elements. To be frank, the images included in the puzzles are unsettling at best, but otherwise I would describe them as some edgy teens art project on the deep web. So far, there hasn't been any real scare for this build at least, so it feels a bit underwhelming for what I'd basically consider a demo. There's a lot of potential for screwing over to the player with a simulated desktop, so seeing that not taken advantage of made me a little bit sad. I do wonder whether they'll lean more into the puzzles or into the horror though, but for now it's mostly just a puzzle game with edgy solutions. In conclusion, I like the concept of the game, but the execution definitely lacks some polish. I'd personally suggest keeping an eye on it if you like the concept because it is still an early access. Just by the backgrounds and profile pictures, I think there's a lot of potential in terms of there being an interesting story. Anyway, those were my thoughts on this game. Thank you for watching and goodbye.